Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today I have with me right here MacBook Pro 16 inch, as well as a Razer Blade Stealth and an RF meter and a Magic Mouse. I'm here to tell you all about radiation levels on these laptops. One, if you're concerned about your health, all that kind of stuff. And secondly, how to get the best connectivity to your mouse. So me, personally, I've been using this Magic Mouse with an ultra-wide display. And once I got an external keyboard and a trackpad and some speakers, I found that the signal interference was making my Magic Mouse run completely sluggish. I'd click and nothing would register. I'd have to click again for it to register. And the reason why was because the laptop was on the left side of the monitor and not the right. Got analysis of the radiation levels of these laptops. And I'm here to tell you where your radio is emitting from, so you can figure out the best position for your laptop, and, and secondly, how much RF is being spewed out to you in your cases. So on the MacBook Pro here, if you have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth turned off, you get no RF, this is completely locked down, as well as this Razer Blade Stealth, both of them off, they're both good. Now, on the MacBook Pro, the radio, so both the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth, is on the left side. So when you're using it here, it's right there. And it emits universally, all the way around. So your knees joints, that's what's getting butchered. But your privates, that's doing well, because from around five centimeters, it dissipates and dissipates well. Right, so here's the MacBook Pro 16 inch standby mode. And here is my RF meter. The green bars indicate that it's only eating up 200 microwatts per meter squared. So very, very minimal activity in this room. There's still 200 to 300 microwatts there. Yeah, pretty much nothing on this side. Nothing is happening over here. All right, so now we're gonna open her up and I have right here my Wi-Fi connected as well as my Bluetooth connected and I'll just show you the readings. So from the bottom, it's still three green bars and one yellow. It's a thousand microwatts, but that's still pretty low. On this side over here, Again, my quads, and on the left side here, you can see that's where it starts to jump up. So we've got one red bar, it's got 10 milliwatts right here. And more precisely, this area here, this is where the radio signal is emitting from. What you need to realize is with Bluetooth just purely enabled, no devices connected, it is gonna be pumping out the signal. Not even if it's detected, it's always pumping out and it gets around 50 milliwatts per meter squared and that is more than half less than what the iPhone is pumping out, so that's still very good in my opinion. With Wi-Fi connected, I've only been able to test 2.4G, not 5G, so with Wi-Fi connected, you do get up to 150 milliwatts per meter squared firing out from this area, but again, it's only doing that when it's uploading data to the cloud. So if you do, for example, try to do some voice recognition with Siri, it's gonna upload some data, and if you do upload files or use the internet, generally it's gonna be firing off that signal. What I'll show you here is because I've had some questions about this. How do the different radios affect the RF levels? So first up, I'm gonna disable Wi-Fi and I'm gonna keep Bluetooth connected. I do have a mouse connected to Bluetooth and I'll just show you on this side. It's just green bars here, well, one green bar. The bottom over here, we can see that we've got one yellow bar and on the left side here, we're getting around 50 milliwatts. So with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, this shoots up to almost 100 milliwatts, but with Bluetooth only, you're getting around 50 milliwatts. And if you're worried about this, if you have it underneath, this is where your lap sits. Again, green bars. So I say it's relatively safe. Still, if you're having it underneath you, not much is going through that way. So now with Bluetooth disabled, on this left side here, you can see that it's completely green. There's no RF coming out of this laptop whatsoever. And I had some people ask me actually, whenever I call Siri, it just fires up all the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth radios. So I'm gonna do that right now. Typically I have my Siri disabled, but I'll just enable it for now temporarily. And I don't wanna share audio recordings. So it says, look, Siri, not available. You are not connected to the internet. So the reason why your laptop fires out RF whenever you make that Siri call is that it has to connect to the internet straight away. So what I'll do is I'm gonna enable the internet and you can see right now, it's just shot up to an RF strength of 
over 100 for a little while and then it shot back down to 80, 20 at the moment. It's all over the place. And straight away, when Siri is called, the bars shoots to about 20 milliwatts per meter squared and it's just recognizing my voice badly. It doesn't understand me whatsoever. I'm just gonna let it figure out what's going on. Now, as soon as I shut down Siri, it makes a call to the internet, gets around 18 milliwatts and then 69 milliwatts. It's constantly trying to connect to iCloud to pass on all my voice data, even though it says it shouldn't share my voice data. And as soon as it's done with the online connection, the RF shoots down because it's no longer connected to the internet. So you will be getting RF from this area whenever it's accessing the internet. And it seems to me that the radio is constantly pumping up and down up to 100 milliwatts from this area. But again, like I said, from around five centimeters away, the levels are very green around the groin area. I'll do another call to Siri over here. So it is now shooting out RF around here, but from this area here, probably your private parts, the most important parts you want to take care of, it's still in the green. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Difference is with this razor blade stealth is, according to this detection meter, I've noticed that the Bluetooth radio is firing from this position, but the Wi-Fi radio is firing from the other side of the position. So it's more of a balanced signal. I mean, if you're both firing them out, you're still gonna get the same levels and the groin protection is still far enough away, five centimeters away, you're not gonna get hit. So from the bottom here, where the groin area is, you can see it's pretty low. You got mostly green bars, one yellow. From the right side here, you can just see that this is where the Wi-Fi activity is happening. So right there, you can see it's shot up to 90, made one connection to a server properly, told Microsoft A, spy on me, and then reported back. On this side here, on the left side, you can see that it's also getting that sort of RF strength. So I guess there is some sort of radio that works on both ends. What I'm gonna do right here is, I'm gonna disable the connections one by one. So first I'll disconnect from Wi-Fi, just to show you where the Bluetooth is. So on the right side, it's a lot lower than before. It's a lot more activity on this side. So I say that the Bluetooth antenna must be on the left side here. And when we have Wi-Fi only, we can see that we are getting 100 milliwatts around the right side and on the left side, getting a lot less. So it seems to me on this laptop here, Wi-Fi is on the right and Bluetooth is on the left, but it is more balanced, I'd say, one side, one side. So combined, if they're both firing out, you're gonna get a lower RF than you would on a MacBook Pro. But overall, I say that the levels in the danger zone areas is pretty low, so I'm happy with both of these laptops. I'd say they're very good. The only caveat I'd say is I've only been able to test 2.4G Wi-Fi because this meter can only detect up to 3.5G. So I haven't been able to test out how 5G works. That's 5G Wi-Fi, not 5G telco, the future ultra, all that kind of stuff. Stuff, not that kind of 5G. And overall, I gotta say, it is pretty good, but just notice if you are connecting to Siri or making any internet connections, it is gonna be shooting out RF, but just purely from this concentrated area. And by the time it gets to your hands and all that stuff, I'd say it's pretty all right. I mean, unless you're using the escape key a lot. And on the flip side here, when you have your magic mouse doing nothing, I'm just seeing pretty much green bars. However, when you do move it or even make clicks, can see that the RF does shoot to around 12, 12 milliwatts. And I'll shake it around a bit. We're gonna get around 20 keyboards. We can see when nothing is happening, it's on the green sort of levels. When you press space, it does shoot up to around 20 milliwatts. And from here also, it does shoot out to around 20 milliwatts of RF. Trackpad, when nothing's happening, it's in the greens, however, if you do use it, it's about 20 milliwatts. So all of these devices each, they have around 20 milliwatts per meter squared of damage when you're using them. However, from around five centimeters away, it dissipates pretty well. So you can see right now, it's just fully on the greens and I'm tapping on the keyboard and clicking on that. So it's all good from around five centimeters away. But up close, I've heard some people say that they're sensitive around the fingertips and all that stuff. Could be possible. 20 milliwatts per meter squared isn't high, but if you're sensitive, might as well try to rule it out. If you want any more information about RF safety, all that kind of stuff, let me know in the comment section below or just watch one of my previous videos where I discuss the topics over and over again, even compare it against a microwave. AirPods Pro, stay away from that. <laughs> wow.
Those guys are crazy. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the show.